Hi, welcome to Open Seating. I'm your host, Brian Lee. My first guests today are Rick Shuffle, the manager, and Sean Borch, the executive Good. chef of the Wonder Bar. Thanks, guys, for coming back. Our, our pleasure, our pleasure. And what's new in the last month? Well, we've been uh, participating in a couple fundraisers for uh, one of them was domestic abuse. We gave 10% of our profits uh, the other night for, uh, for that benefit. And uh, we also uh, took part in a, a silent auction uh, for the Mallards, and we uh, purchased a pink bat, and all the players signed it, and it's it's a nice piece. We've got to hang in there at the at the Wonder Bar. So you guys do a lot to give back to the community. We're working on a few more things also, but uh, you know uh, uh, we're always uh, uh, willing to uh, you know stretch out there and make Very something nice. happen. Yeah. Well, I saw backstage how much food you guys were preparing, <laughs> so I'm I'm hungry. What's first, Sean? First, we get the wedge salad. Our wedge salad, usually a typical wedge, stands up tall. We decided to go circular. I went to a place in Chicago, and they, uh, they it just made it easier to eat. The appearance was better. And then we also use our uh, fresh uh, baked um, bacon, and uh, we also have our uh, blue cheese uh, Roquefort dressing on top. Well, very nice. You know, even for a wedge salad, this is pretty big. I mean, do people actually finish this? A lot of people don't, but uh, once again, we like to have the wow factor at the, the Wonder Bar, you know. Uh, if that comes out on your plate, that's a great start to your meal, in my opinion. Well, it's a good blend of the tanginess from the Roquefort and the saltiness from the bacon. That's fantastic. And so, in the second half, we're going to be checking out some steaks, right? Yes, we've got some, uh, we've got our house steak, which is a, a Manhattan. Now, the Manhattan is uh, it's cut from the center of the New York strip loin. So a lot of people serve it flat. We like to serve it like a tenderloin. So once again, it's the wow factor. Okay. You know, and then we also have our uh, our cowboy, which is a very popular steak. Um, the difference between that is, uh, you know, it's got a bone in ribeye. Um, the bone brings a lot of flavor to the meat, and there's some beautiful fat on there. And we age all our steaks for 28 days. Most places will go 21. So. Well, wow, those look absolutely fantastic, and I look forward to uh, having them in the second half. We'll have more with the Wonder Bar folks right after this. I am very hungry, and I'm just going to smell this during the commercial break. <laughs> Ooh, this guy right here, Sean, he is sizzling. Look at those steaks. All right, well, here, let's set up our Manhattan. Like I said before, I'm a beef purist, so I just believe in the butter and the salt and pepper. I can get it out that of here. That is a tall boy right there. There we go. Now we got some butter. Okay, and yeah. a little salt and pepper. Tasty. All right. And then right this on. will be our yeah. tall boy. This is, wow, this looks incredible. That's fantastic. I can see why that's your signature steak. Is that outsell everyone else? Uh, that and the cowboy are very close, and then of course our six ounce tenderloin. It seems like you can't get everybody loves the tenderloin, you know. Okay, I can't wait. This is my favorite cut right here. Yeah, mine, mine too. <laughs> How do you like your steaks? Yeah. I like my steaks uh, very rare. <laughs> it's super tender. It, it's it's like butter, kind of. It's a, it's perfectly done. And I just got a total mouthful. So, I'm curious. When people come in for the first time, are they pleasantly surprised by your prices? Yeah, that, that's something we, when we first opened, we talked about, and we really wanted to be a uh, part of that, uh, that we were quality food, but still cheaper than the normal steakhouse. So we really pride ourselves on that, having great food and charging a lower price. Yeah, it was all, it was all part of the experience we talked about. Absolutely. That we want people to come in, have a great experience, and, and, uh, and, and not want to leave. I want to keep tacking these steaks. <laughs> so yeah. good. Uh, I'm curious, what are some of the add-ons you can put? Uh, we have uh, we have our Oscar style, which is uh, crab and asparagus and uh, uh, Bernays sauce. We also have hollandaise. We have whiskey peppercorn. We have a poivre. Um, and I think that's about and it. The mushrooms you oh, make. The mushrooms and the onions beautiful, too. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, I'm a purist. I love it just the way that is. Uh, it looks like you have a dessert here for me yes, to try? Yes, that's a little creme brulee. All our desserts are house made at the Wonder Bar too, so uh, we have three different desserts. We have a flourless chocolate tort, we have our creme brulee, and then we have our uh, old fashioned cheesecake. All right, I'm digging and right the in. The good thing about that is my mom makes all the desserts, so um, it's a good time in the morning. And then we have our port wine here that Rick poured. Oh, you very agree. sweet, very creamy. It's a good way to cap off this meal. And this is a port, you said? Yeah, you pair those together, there's nothing like it. I, I completely agree. Yeah, so yeah. port's gotten more popular nowadays. Yeah, it's it's taken off. It, it people have it for dessert sometimes, but uh, yeah, it's 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 getting a little more well known. We have a Colburn uh, that's pretty popular. 
And what, what are some of the other desserts that you guys serve? We do the flour with chocolate tart, and then we also do our old-fashioned cheesecake. And do people pair it with coffee too, or more yeah, cocktails in Manhattan? A, a lot of coffee with the cheesecake, the tort. I, I, you know, I think a lot of people just—it's so decadent because we have fresh whipped cream on there, fresh berries, and then we top it with uh, Reese's peanut butter uh, uh, pieces too. Yeah, and the so. chocolate tort—they pair that with uh, Cabernet. And there you go. Okay, so someone had that big wedge salad, then this huge yeah. monster of a steak, and they somehow made it to dessert. Sure. That actually happens. Huh? Oh yeah, it sure bet, does happen. Yeah. Do people ever just come in for, you know, drinks and dessert? All the time, all the time. And people can sit at the bar and have their full meal there too, right? Yeah, all the time. It's, uh, it's, it's actually a very popular place for uh, people to sit there. We, they uh, come in and they'll wait for a chair, so, yeah. And you have upstairs spacing, yeah. a space too? Seat about 60 up there. And you can rent that out for private parties and so forth? Yeah, far? we work with people on parties. Uh, we got Christmas coming up, so I sense we'll have some bites there. So yeah, you're gonna be even busier coming up, huh? Yeah, let's hope so. And uh, I'm curious that uh, there's parking in front, but there's parking in the back too. People may not know that. And on the side at the WPS building too, that's all available after five o'clock. So. Mm -hmm. Available after five o'clock. Okay, great. Well, thank you guys so much for thank you. Appearing Appreciate it. Show again. Thank you. This is fabulous stuff, folks. I, I'm serious. You got to try that cowboy steak or the signature steak. I'm gonna digest during this commercial break. And welcome back. I'm joined now by Ken Galson. He's the owner of Coffee Cup in Stoughton. Hey, Ken. Hey there. How you doing? Great. Now, you have such a popular restaurant that you appear in actually three books. Is that correct? That's correct. That's, it's, it's even just surprising to me because I'm just a restaurant owner. I just bought a restaurant to run a restaurant, not to establish in the cookbooks and to just Cafe Wisconsin books. But uh, Well, it's obviously got to be a great restaurant if you appear in these books. Yeah. Well, it's not just me. It's Cafe Wisconsin, all Main Street cafes in the state of Wisconsin. But yeah, it was, it was an honor. It feels good. I feel good about it. Now, I'm sure there are a lot of food fanatics out there that probably read the book and went cafe to cafe in the state. Have you met some of these guys? Oh, yeah, it's crazy when it first came out that they'd go on their uh, you know, weekend excursions on the Harleys and they'd come to the restaurant and visit and then they'd have me autograph it. And that, was, that was even great. I felt you know, pretty special at that time. <laughs> so you're famous now? I don't, I don't know if I'm famous, but I'm on the map. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. And this cookbook, you actually contributed some recipes. Yes, yes. They did uh, the final Cafe Wisconsin cookbook they did. They put a bunch of recipes together with all the uh, other restaurants that are in these uh, Cafe Wisconsin books. I'm on the cover. That's the restaurant in uh, uh, sauerkraut and ribs right here. But uh, I got a bunch of recipes in here, about 15 recipes that I've contributed to this cookbook. So, And they're, they're out in libraries and they're out in bookstores. So. Sounds like they should rename the book Coffee Cup and Other Cafes in Wisconsin. Hey, wow, hey, here you are. I like that. So you were all comfortable giving away these recipes? Oh, not a problem. I, I, I have no problem giving away recipes, except I just put my little bit of love in it, a little bit of, I tweak it a little bit. That's the difference. That you won't get from me. And are, are these in display at your store as well, or your restaurant? I, I don't have any right now, but when they first came out, yes, I did. I gave them away. I've sold them, but uh, we, they're, they're available. They just, uh, I just got to get some orders in for them, but not a problem. I can't wait to eat more with Ken right after this. Thank you. Welcome back. I am hungry. I don't know about you folks at home, but I, am, I can't wait to dig in. So what do we have first, Ken? Oh, we got your main entree. This is pumpkin stew. And we have homemade apple pie, homemade pumpkin pie. So, well, so let's start with the stews. I s presume that's a seasonal dish? Yes, it's seasonal when the pumpkins are available. And uh, it's just a typical carving pumpkin. So that's what you start out with, which is you can get anywhere, any block this oh, time of year. I love that you stew it in a pumpkin. Yes, I do. That's exactly the way to do it. Pumpkin stew. So you ready? I am. Sorry. Oh, you guys got to get a load of this. Take the top right off of that. There it is. Look at that. Still Ooh, steaming. Very nice. So what we'll do is to serve it up, we just, I got a bowl here. Take some of the stew out of there. It gets a little sloppy here. And then what you do is you try to take a little bit of the pumpkin rind with it. Just a little bit. You don't have to serve a lot. I've got some down here. You set a little bit to the side. Just a little bit. And then what I do is I like to top the, the pumpkin off with a little bit of sour cream to make it look like a maybe pumpkin pie with whipped cream. And there you go. Okay, I can't wait to dig in. I'm gonna try to get There's a fork there too if you need. I need a bigger spoon than this. I should use that okay. one. <laughs> <laughs> then you need a bigger mouth. 
I like it. It's very savory. Um, it, it's like a taste of autumn. Hey, yeah, I like that. Yeah, <laughs> that's fantastic. You bet. All right, moving on to the pies. Pies. This is uh, this is the combination of the wife and I. This is I usually do the apples, and then she puts together all the crust and makes it look pretty. So, is this one of your more popular pies? Well, apple pie is the most popular pie that I think anywhere. But go ahead. I'm going to let you well, cut this into is it. so you beautiful. I hate to cut into oh, it. Oh, that's what you know. That's what it's all about. You know that. All right, so I've got a bigger slice here. Well, we only got three minutes, so. <laughs> <laughs> So how many different pies do you serve on a you know, daily basis, or do you rotate them? No, we serve, uh, I would say we have cream pies, we also have fruit pies, and of course custard pies, and we try to do seasonal pies, you know, like we have a fruit of the forest and strawberry, uh, strawberry rhubarb, it's very popular, both of them are, and so is the apple, and uh, of course now the apples are in season, so we can get really a, a variety of apples and make different types of apple pies. But them are the three popular ones, and cream pies are coconut and chocolate cream, which are very popular, and uh, we try to do the best. We, we offer probably about maybe 12 pies a day, but you can't make them all in one day. So you might have a couple of apples, you might not have the chocolate cream. So, I mean, please, you know, if you come in there, <laughs> we'll try to do the best we can, but we can't make them all, you know, or else they're right. not going to be homemade or fresh. Oh, I like it. I like the nice thick crust, actually, a lot, and the apple's so soft I, and tender. just goes well together. Yeah, I agree, 100%. You want to try a little bit of that pumpkin pie, too? I definitely do. This is actually my favorite type of pie. It's a little tricky to make uh, a custard pie because it, they tend to burn more than if you use a lower heat and a little longer uh, time to cook it, to, it'll turn out just fine. So do people ever come in and order pie for breakfast? Yes, pie for breakfast. They also order pie, pie for their holidays. You know, I've had people come mm. in and ask for pie just to take to their church function or to their parties. And we'll do that and we'll accommodate if we can. You know, don't give me, you know, uh, a day's notice to make an apple pie. I need at least 20. So you can order to go for catering you, purposes. Yes, we can, yes. And uh, it, 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 it's very successful that way. People enjoy them. You have an estimate how many pumpkin pies you sell in a typical season in the fall? Oh, uh, you're now you're getting to me. <laughs> <laughs> Trick question. I would say that we typically go through maybe a, at this time of year a pumpkin pie a day. I would, you know, put that on there. I mean, it might be two on one day or it might be none on one day, but it's probably 12 pies a week. 12 pies a week? Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah, about a dozen pies. Right in there. Well, Ken, thanks for filling up my stomach. It was a pleasure <laughs> to have you on the show again. My pleasure, too. Thank you very much. And we'll be right back. Hi again, my next guest is Nick Quint. He's the president of Yahar Bay Distillers. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. I'm curious, how did you get started? About six years ago, I, had, I was reading about the craft distillery movement and did a little studying, came out of retirement and became something that uh, I just didn't want to pass on in life without at least trying. It just seemed like a challenge and I came out of retirement and started. I love that you came out of retirement to do this. <laughs> so there seems to be a craft distillery boom now in the country and he, even here in Madison, is that right? Yes, so when, when I started six years ago, the, we were the second in the state, now there are about 15. Uh, there were about 90 in the nation, now there are probably four or five hundred, I don't even know how many, and they will continue. But you had a major right. impact here in Madison. I mean, they had to write the laws for you guys. Well, yeah, the, each state, uh, the, the growth of this industry really is predicated on state laws. Some states make it very difficult, uh, some not so difficult. In the state of Washington, for example, there are over 70 operating distilleries, uh, craft distillers. Uh, Wisconsin has, has helped. Uh, their laws are getting a little better all the time, so it makes it easier. You guys are, you guys are a small batch distillery. What does that mean? Small batch, uh, craft distilling, small batch, we're, we're small producers. Uh, we use as much local ingredients as we can, as fruits and grains, and our, our still is a 90 gallon still. So eat, no batch can be over 90 gallons, and it takes probably a day just to, to do that. So we make a variety of products, but not a lot of each one. Now, before we go to break, just want to check, you guys are open for tours and tastings? Yes, uh, we're open anytime. I recommend everybody call ahead. But on Thursday nights from 5 until 10, uh, we have the public house is called and our tasting room is open. We have a bartender, hors d'oeuvres, uh, sometimes music. Uh, it's well, a lot of fun. I'm going to see it firsthand when we come back.
Ooh, I'm really excited now. I'm joined by Lars Forty. He is the head distiller at Yahar Bay, and we got a lot to sample here. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Okay, so your whiskey is your best seller. Tell me about it. It is uh, the Yahar Bay's number one selling product. Um, it's a four grain Wisconsin whiskey utilizing corn, wheat, barley, and rye. Aged two years, heavy heads cuts, we eliminate all those methyl alcohols pre barreling. So, a nice, smooth, mild whiskey. So, um, no bite then? No bite. We'll go ahead and sample a little here. Uh, you're going to notice the, the caramel and vanilla coming through uh, in the finish. Um, and this looks very good. It's a nice healthy pour. I thank you for that. So you said a nice little caramel finish to this? Yep. You're gonna, on, the, on the initial hit, you're going to get the grain. And, on, and as it rolls back the tongue, it's going to finish like a caramel and, uh, and nice vanilla oh. overtones. Splendid as always. Yep, nice and mild. Oh, I was hoping you would join me here. Okay, so now we're moving over this beautiful bottle here. What is this? Seraphine is our chai tea infused vodka utilizing the Yahara Bay vodka as the base. And it's a natural infusion, so that's where the color is coming from. Um, and it's, uh, it's also a team with a, a local artist, John S. Cheeman, who uh, designed the label. So it's a kind of an integration of artist and artisan, if you will. And how'd you come up with this name here? Seraphine is actually the, the name of the painting. And it just fits so well. It was so elegant with the product that we uh, we just chose to use it as the uh, oh, you might as. No, go ahead. Okay, I can't wait. This is so pretty. So chai tea. Chai tea. You're gonna get the oh, chai on the I nose. Absolutely yeah. nice, smooth finish again because those heads cuts we eliminate all those methyls. Oh, that is so soft. Very delicate. I like it a lot. Very smooth. Yep. Yep. Now moving on to your. Uh, these two bottles here, they're, they're brand new. Yep, brand new products. Uh, we just got the label approved for the, for the aged gin, which we're very excited about. Um, it's kind of a making a, a resurrection, the aged gin. Typically, gin in a bottle is clear. Clear, yeah. So we are aging our gin. Uh, it's an award, a gold medal winning gin, and then put into our bourbon barrel for six months. So that's where the color is coming from. So it's going to be very juniper forward like a gin is, but it's going to finish nice and mellow. You're going to get the caramel from that barrel, from the, from the uh, bourbon. Yeah, and so you alluded to your clear gins have won multiple awards. Multiple awards, yep. Internationally uh, in a, in a uh, competition in Sweden and also a couple of awards here in the States as well. So yeah, I'm not shy here. Proud. I'm just going to Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Please, please. So again, as, as it's rolling back your tongue, it's going to hit you like a gin. You're going to get that juniper, juniper forward and a nice caramel vanilla finish. Oh. Nice, nice and round. Very, very smooth. I think uh, a lot of people may seem to be scared of gin, but this this is this is it. It is. It's uh, it's it's it drinks almost like a whiskey. You can drink it neat. You can yep. drink it on the rocks, but it also makes a great cocktail. And how do you like to drink it? I drink it neat. Okay. I'm a distiller. So. That way. <laughs> okay. And this last bottle here. Absolutely. This is our newest liqueur, utilizing Wisconsin Wisconsin cranberries. So it's straight from the bog to the bottle. Uh, very excited about it. It's a very Wisconsin product. Uh, the lemon was such a hit that we added this to uh, to the to the lemon line. So a cranchella. So not overly sweet, not mm. too thick, but the cranberries come through just beautifully, and that is a vodka base. Yeah, perfect, perfect for the holidays coming up. I love that lemon chai. I actually make in martinis all the Absolutely. time, so I, I think this would work perfectly. Too. Absolutely. Oh, that cranberry is very good. Cranberry it's, it's not tart at all, too. No, 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 not too sweet, not too tart. You know, perfect balance. You guys got to be busy if you're launching new products and you have this whole line. Absolutely, yeah. We are keeping busy, uh, launching uh, different states all the time, and uh, we're just thrilled to be to be part of the craft distilling movement here in Wisconsin, and look forward to push forward. Well, this is wonderful. Um, Nick in the earlier segment said that you guys are open on Thursdays, and people can come in. Yep, and absolutely. Taste all this. Our public house, five to five to ten every Thursday night. Uh, come in, sample anything you'd like. We do tours of the distillery, and we have a cash bar as well. And people can say hi to you, right? Absolutely. You, you bet. <laughs> well, this is absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much, Lars. This Thank is you great. for having us. And uh, we'll be right back. And welcome back. My next guest is Eric Irwin. He is the owner of Firehouse Subs. Thanks for coming back. All right. Thanks for having me back, Brian. Now, the Firehouse Sub story is so great. It's worth telling again. Absolutely. Uh, we were founded in 1994 in Jacksonville, Florida by two firefighting brothers, Chris and Robin Sorensen. They have decades and decades of firefighting history in their family. Uh, our big point of differentiation is that we steam the meat and cheese, brings out the flavor of the meat, melts the cheese. We pile it higher. Medium sandwiches have a quarter pound of meat, and our, half, our large sandwiches have a full half pound of, of meat. Uh, we also have our Coca-Cola Freestyle with 120 different brands. We have 50 hot sauces in our hot sauce display. 
Also, the heart of our company is the Public Safety Foundation. We've raised $7.7 .7 million to date. In Wisconsin, we've managed to give away uh, $5,000 to the McFarland Fire Department and $15,000 to the Oshawagon Fire Department up in Green Bay. That is the true heart of our company. I'd also like to speak real quickly to the development of Wisconsin. We're going to open up 42 firehouse subs across the state. We have six open right now. We have two in Milwaukee, uh, one in Elm Grove, Caddy Corner from the Brookfield Mall, uh, one just south of the Mayfair Mall in Wauwatosa, one on Nida Street in Green Bay. We're in Eau Claire as well, and uh, by Walmart. And we have our two locations here in Madison at Fish Hatchery and just north of the Beltline and on the west side of town on Mineral Point, just east of the Beltline. First, Eric, your memory is impressive. They'll name all those cities. That was really good. Uh, that Emo Street location that you just referred to, you just had a big grand opening party. We did. We had them lined up at 1030. We were busy all day. We had Bucky Badger there. Uh, my partner, Don Davey, who's a former University of Wisconsin and Green Bay Packer great. And it was a great celebration. I'd like to thank you for coming out and enjoying our subs as well, Brian. I had a great time. And w you know, when I was there, I could experience that family-oriented atmosphere. You guys just l must love families. Absolutely. We had fire helmets for all the kids. We had the sirens going. Uh, we had Mike Foos, Fireman Mike Foos there, singing one of his uh, signature songs, the Firehouse Sub Song and uh, the families just uh, eat it up, literally. So tell me about that. that there's a fireman that wrote a song? Yep, Fireman Mike Foos. He supplies all of our uh, decor for our restaurant, so I'm very grateful to him. And he has a band as well, and he wrote a theme song, which you can pick up at the uh, Emil Street location, I believe. He printed up several CDs. And those proceeds also benefit the uh, foundation as well? Absolutely. Everything goes to the Firehouse Subs Public Safety Foundation from the pickle buckets to the medallions that we're doing this month for the fire safety uh, month of October. And then, of course, our Roundup program. I am very impressed how much you guys do. Uh, and we can't forget that you guys also do catering, correct? Absolutely. I look forward to talking to catering on our next segment. You heard it right here. We're going to talk about all the firehouse catering and all the things that they have to offer. And I've seen it backstage. It's impressive. Right after this. Hello, hello, and uh, Bobby's joining us now. She's the training store manager at Firehouse Subs. So let's talk about catering. If people don't want to have a whole party tray and want to do boxes, you guys can do that, right? Oh, absolutely. What we have is a lieutenant box. That's the best seller there because it's got two types of meats. It's got turkey and roast beef, or you can choose ham and turkey. And my favorite is the Italian. It's got salami and pepperoni and ham. And it comes with a bag of chips and a cookie. And there's a smaller size version of this? And there's a rookie size, with, and the only difference is no cookie. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> now, these, surf, th these follow your theme that you guys have. It's uh, the model that you guys carry for all your catering. Yes. Sure, the three C's of catering, which is convenience, costs, and caring, right? Caring, yeah. correct. Uh, we have 19 years of experience at Firehouse Subs with our catering menu. Uh, it's one phone call. We have on-site setup by caring people, and free delivery is what we bring to the table. We can feed a family of 10 for a football game, or we can feed a convention of 1,000 people. Uh, it's all-inclusive. We have plates, silverware, condiments. We even give you a trash bag for cleanup afterwards. Uh, we can customize the order, depending on your dietary needs. Uh, we have platters that we're going to get into here in a minute, but we can do half platters. Uh, again, the convenience, one call. Again, those, who you would call is the Mineral Point location where Bobby works. And then we also have a catering expert there, Kylie Van Ness. So feel free to call us at our Mineral Point location or talk to Derek Nichols or Garrett Hudson, our catering expert, at our Emil Street, which is Fish Hatchery, just north of the Beltline. So one call, on-site setup by caring people, and uh, free delivery. That's great. Uh, these boxes are so beautifully crafted. Tell me about them. Well, first of all, this is our party, plat party platter. It's a half pound of USDA meat, locally sourced vegetables, with real Wisconsin cheese. All the cheese in the entire company, 770 restaurants, or I'm sorry, 670 restaurants, all comes from the great state of Wisconsin. Yeah. What would a box like that cost? 
Uh, you can feed 10 for $5.50, and so with that, that would be a party pack. Each person would get a six inch sub with a quarter pound of meat, a bag of chips, a freshly baked cookie, and then a beverage of choice. Down here you see we have our lemonade and then our uh, cherry limeade, which is uh, just for Firehouse Sub. That's made special by Coca-Cola for us, uh, the cherry limeade. Um, uh, these jugs are beautiful, and let's, uh, before we end here, this, these desserts. Oh boy, now, aren't they luscious looking? We have a brownie, we have a uh, brownie that's a s'mores, of course our chocolate chip cookies, and a lemon cooler, and it's got white chocolate chips in it. That's very nice, and the salad too? And then the salad, you gotta, um, of course you can take a lot of these ingredients off if you don't want them, we can put them on the side for you, but it comes with, you know, different choices of uh, your dressings. And um, well, that's wonderful. Thank yes. you guys so much for joining us today. And thank you guys so much for watching Open City. I'm Brian Lee. Hope you watch us next time.